Ever wondered why some people seem to get rich effortlessly, while others struggle to make ends meet? Today we're diving into the world of Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert T. Kiyosaki. We'll be unraveling the fundamental principles of this game-changing book and breaking them down into bite-sized, easy-to-understand steps. You'll learn the secrets of financial independence and wealth accumulation that have transformed countless lives. So are you ready to change your perspective on money and wealth? Stick around to discover the secrets of financial independence and wealth accumulation. The core concept of Rich Dad, Poor Dad is quite simple yet profound. It revolves around two contrasting perspectives on wealth and money management, represented by Robert Kiyosaki's two dads. The rich dad is a man of financial acumen. He believes in earning money not just by working for it, but by having it work for him. He embodies the idea that financial success comes from investing in assets and creating passive income streams. He champions the importance of financial education, understanding the difference between assets and liabilities, and the power of entrepreneurship. On the other hand, the poor dad represents a more conventional mindset. He is a firm believer in the traditional path. Go to school, get good grades, land a secure job and save for retirement. He views money through the lens of scarcity and fears taking financial risks. The contrast between these two mindsets is stark and illuminates the differing attitudes towards wealth accumulation. The rich dad approach is proactive, leveraging financial knowledge to build wealth. The poor dad approach is more reactive, focusing on preserving what one already has. In essence, Kiyosaki's concept challenges us to evaluate our own financial beliefs and habits. It encourages us to question whether we are truly working towards financial independence or merely chasing after the illusion of financial security. The rich dad mentality encourages financial education and independence, while the poor dad mindset promotes traditional job security. Principle number one, financial literacy. In the world of finance, knowledge is power. It's a landscape dotted with terms like assets, liabilities, and cash flow. These aren't just abstract concepts, they're the building blocks of financial success. But what do they mean, and why are they important? Let's start with assets. An asset is something that puts money in your pocket. It could be a rental property, a business, or an investment that generates income. On the flip side, we have liabilities. These are things that take money out of your pocket, like a mortgage, a car loan, or credit card debt. Now here's where it gets interesting. Cash flow is the money that's moving in and out of your pocket. If more money is flowing in than out, you're in a cash flow positive situation. That's where you want to be. So why is understanding these terms so crucial? Let's look at Warren Buffett, one of the most successful investors in history. He didn't just stumble upon his wealth. He built it on a solid foundation of financial literacy. He knew the difference between an asset and a liability, and he understood how to create positive cash flow. Buffett once said, risk comes from not knowing what you are doing. In other words, financial literacy reduces risk. It allows you to make informed decisions about where to put your money. It helps you understand the difference between a good investment and a bad one. But financial literacy isn't just about making money. It's about creating wealth. Wealth isn't just having a lot of money, it's having assets that generate income. It's about building a financial engine that keeps running, even when you're not. Financial literacy is about understanding the game of money, so you can play it to win. It's about being able to read the financial landscape so you can navigate it successfully. It's about making your money work for you, instead of you working for your money. In the end, financial literacy isn't just a principle, it's a tool. It's a tool that, when used correctly, can help you create a financially secure and prosperous future. Financial literacy allows you to make informed decisions and create wealth. Principle number two, investment in assets. Now, what exactly does this mean? Well, in the simplest terms, it's about putting your money where it can work for you. It's about investing in things that generate income, not things that drain your wallet. Think about it. When you buy a car, for instance, it starts losing value the moment you drive it off the lot. Sure, it gets you from point A to point B, but it's not putting money in your pocket. It's a liability. 
On the other hand, imagine buying a rental property. Each month, the rent you collect generates income. Over time, the property may even appreciate in value, adding to your wealth. That's an asset. Now let's bring this concept to life with a real-world example. Enter real estate mogul Donald Bren. This man, with a net worth of over $16 billion, is one of the richest real estate developers in America. But how did he amass such a fortune? Did he invest in shiny new cars or the latest gadgets? No, he invested in assets. Specifically, Bren saw the potential in undeveloped land in Southern California. He bought it, built on it, and as the area grew and prospered, so did his wealth. This is the power of investing in assets. It's not about instant gratification. It's about thinking long term, about making strategic decisions that will generate income over time. It's about understanding that the real path to wealth is not through accumulating stuff, but through accumulating assets. Now you might be thinking, I don't have millions of dollars to invest in real estate, and that's okay. The principle of investing in assets applies to more than just property. It could be stocks, bonds, or even starting your own business. The key is to find something that can generate income and increase in value over time. So, take a page from Donald Bren's playbook. Start looking at your money differently. Start seeing it as a tool that can work for you, not just something you work for. Remember, investing in assets is the key to creating and growing wealth. Principle number three, mind your own business. This principle may sound straightforward, but it holds a depth of wisdom that can transform your financial journey. So what does it mean to mind your own business? It's not about being indifferent to others. It's about focusing on your own financial affairs, creating personal wealth and not being distracted by the allure of quick profits elsewhere. You see, many of us spend our lives working for someone else, making their dreams come true while ours take a back seat. We're often so wrapped up in the day-to-day -day grind that we neglect our own financial affairs. We might be experts in our job roles, but when it comes to our own money matters, we're novices. However, minding your own business doesn't mean quitting your job and starting a new venture. It's about creating and nurturing your own assets that can generate income, even while you're working for others. It's about becoming financially literate, understanding how money works, and using that knowledge to make your money work for you. Now let's consider an example. Think about Bill Gates, who built a fortune by focusing on his own business. Gates didn't just work a job, he created Microsoft, a business that generates wealth for him and his family, even when he's not actively working. His focus was on building his own wealth, not just earning a salary. So how can you mind your own business? Start by educating yourself about finances, learn about investments, understand how to create assets, and make informed financial decisions. Then, use this knowledge to create your own wealth. It might be through real estate, stocks, a side business, or any other form of investment that suits your skills and interests. Remember, the key is not to be swayed by get-rich-quick schemes or the promise of easy money. Instead, concentrate on building a strong financial base that can sustain and grow your wealth over time. By minding your own business, you take control of your financial future. It's not just about amassing wealth. It's about creating financial security and freedom for yourself and your loved ones. So, start today and remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Are you finding these principles intriguing and valuable? If so, why not take a step further into this journey of financial literacy? By subscribing to our channel and hitting that notification bell, you're not just tapping into a wealth of knowledge, you're joining a community. A community of people who, like you, are keen to take charge of their financial education. So, don't hesitate. Click that subscribe button, ring that bell, and let's continue this journey together. Join our community of financial enthusiasts and take charge of your financial education. Principle number four, the power of corporations. Now let's dive into the sea of corporate power and understand how it can be an incredible shield for your financial fortress. Corporations, these mammoth structures of business, wield a power that can be harnessed for significant financial protection and benefits. They're not just fancy logos or skyscrapers dotting our city skylines. 
They're entities that, when understood and utilized correctly, can become potent tools in your wealth-building arsenal. Picture this. You're an individual earning a hefty income. That's great, right? But hold on a minute. Before you can even touch your earnings, the taxman cometh. And oh boy, does he take a sizable chunk. However, corporations play by a different set of rules. They earn, spend, and then, and only then, are they taxed. This fundamental difference can mean more money in your pocket at the end of the day. Let's take a look at a real-world example. A man who needs no introduction, Jeff Bezos. Now, he didn't become the titan of e-commerce by chance. He leveraged the power of corporations to build Amazon, a company that today stands tall among the giants of industry. Bezos understood early on that to truly scale and protect his wealth, he needed to harness the power of the corporate structure. And my friends, the results speak for themselves. Now, don't misinterpret this as a call to start a corporation tomorrow. It's not. This principle is about understanding that corporations offer advantages that individuals simply don't have. It's about realizing that these entities, which might seem distant and impersonal, can actually be your allies on the path to financial freedom. So remember, corporations aren't just big businesses, they're tools. Tools that, when used correctly, can offer financial protection and benefits that go beyond what an individual can achieve alone. Leveraging the power of corporations can significantly boost your wealth-building efforts. So, there you have it. The key principles of Rich Dad Poor Dad in a nutshell. We've journeyed through the fundamental teachings of Robert T. Kiyosaki, exploring the pivotal concepts that he believes leads to financial independence. It's essential to remember that these aren't just abstract ideas, they're practical tools you can start using today, no matter where you are on your financial journey. First, we delved into the importance of financial literacy. Understanding the language of money is akin to gaining a passport to financial freedom. It's about knowing the difference between an asset and a liability, understanding how to read financial statements and not shying away from the numbers. As Warren Buffett, one of the world's most successful investors once said, risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. Next, we touched on the crucial principle of investing in assets. Remember, an asset puts money in your pocket. Whether it's real estate, stocks, or a side business, assets are your ticket to escaping the rat race. As the legendary investor Benjamin Graham advised, investment is most intelligent when it is most businesslike. Then, we moved on to the concept of minding your own business. It's about focusing on your financial affairs, building and maintaining your wealth. Picture yourself as the CEO of your own financial life with the power to shape your financial future. As Steve Jobs, the co-founder of Apple, emphasized, your work is going to fill a large part of your life and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. Finally, we unraveled the power of corporations. Using corporations as shields against excessive taxes is a strategy utilized by the rich. It's about playing smart with the rules of the game. As Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, noted, the biggest risk is not taking any risk. In a world that's changing quickly, the only strategy that is guaranteed to fail is not taking risks. And that brings us to the end of our journey through the teachings of Rich Dad. Poor Dad. But remember, this is just the beginning of your journey towards financial freedom. As we part ways, let's remember the words of Robert T. Kiyosaki himself. Don't work for money, make money work for you. Start your journey to financial freedom today.